Well, as I talked about earlier, the media exercises a great deal of control in just what they decide to report on. Not only what they say, but even the stories they decide to cover, just as they did not discover, or they're not covering the abortion trial in Philadelphia. And we have a couple of our crew here who went to Las Vegas this last week to the National Association of Broadcasters convention there, and they noticed something very interesting. We're going to let them tell you about that right now. It's John Bowne and Marcus Morales. Welcome, guys. Hey, good to be here. David, tell us a little bit about that trip, what you saw there. Well, you know, Vegas is always an interesting place to go. Uh, but we went there to the uh, National Association of Broadcasters, which is a convention. Uh, the, the association itself began in 1922. It was a radio broadcasting um, association. And it gradually be included television and uh, elements of film and radio. Mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty much the place to go to if you want to look at anything that has to do with broadcasting, television, or radio now. The, everything as far as equipment is there, right? It's incredibly impressive. They, everything is there. We walked forever. Um, our feet got incredibly tired, but uh, it was so interesting that we went back to the hotel and we sat for five minutes and went back. Uh, it, was, it was that interesting. We wanted to see everything. Um, and everything is there, and every country is represented. Uh, there, it's so global at this point that there are people representing products from other countries that don't even speak English. Mm -hmm. We were shopping for new equipment for the studio here, which is why we need you guys' support out there. Absolutely. To help us get the latest and greatest. We found some stuff within our means, within our budget, and some of the guys are bringing up the interface, and it was like... It was it was in Japanese characters and things. so that's how that's how diverse yeah, we, yeah. we talk to companies from Australia, companies from uh, Dutch companies, German companies, Spanish companies, even mm -hmm. all the great toys are there. All the mm -hmm. toys necessary for broadcasting. And that's the thing we're doing a major major like you mentioned a major build out of additional studio. And, uh, it's going to be great. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, be a great, great series. It's going to really help us with what we're covering. It's going to allow us to do uh, more reports because we can do things simultaneously with multiple studios. It's really important for people to uh, support us at InfoWars store. <laughs> <laughs> but see, the, the, all that equipment is what draws the uh, representatives from the media there. Mm -hmm. There was representatives from every corner of the earth. Yeah, it, it, and, and the products that were there, the technology that was there, at, at some point it, it was like you jumped into the ocean and there were all these weird fish because uh, the technology, some of it uh, was a, a niche that hadn't been hit yet and, you know, some of it made sense that they were making that and some of it didn't, you know, and mm -hmm. as he said, the Japanese uh, folks that we met, they were very nice, but... Uh, you know, they mainly spoke Japanese, so customer service would have been an issue. <laughs> but, uh, well, tell us what you saw there, because uh, you know, it was interesting, because this was a bunch of broadcasters that were there, and uh, you saw a very interesting news event. And news outlets there, yeah. That. There was a lot of people out there talking about you know, their news product, their, their news as a, as a product, essentially. Right, right. This They're packaging their show for redistribution. That, yeah, right. and there, there was... The, the place was packed with, with media representatives, news people, you know, people who are supposed to be telling human stories from around the globe. And then uh, right outside, we were trying to make a point of, of, you know, the consolidation of media into less and less hands mm -hmm. and uh, tighter and tighter controls over the message. And as we're doing our stand-ups outside, we came across a human story right outside that nobody in the building was was paying any attention to, mm -hmm. and not, none of the local media. John John jumped right in with these people too, and it's it, it's I guess it's kind of boring. People don't really you know you turn on your TV and you don't really realize what's going on, and yeah, it looks good you know on my 1080 HD TV and uh, everything. And I'm not going to complain about it, but the truth of the matter is that. In 1983, and you're going to hear this in the piece coming up, in 1983 there were 50 corporations, and today there are only five. There's actually six. Uh, GE, NBC is actually a, a minor player, but uh, really there's five. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually ran into a woman from Fox News who was a higher up, you remember? And she said uh, she didn't want to be on camera. She said that she would personally hear it from Rupert. 
but uh, she said that we were doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Uh, she's really proud of us and alternative media rising like it is. That's great. And just today, Ben Swan was on the radio show with Alex, mm -hmm. and he's leaving a Fox News affiliate because they're putting pressure on him as to what he can say and do, right? Said, you know, because they wanted Alex's to focus show locally, before. and he That's wanted right. to focus on a global message. That's which right. Yeah. We all should pay attention to and. Mm -hmm. In injecting that into but the. I think they put their... some pressure on him not to go on Alex's show or something. Did, did he say that? Mm -hmm. or maybe uh, he, I, maybe I'm I'm wrong about that. But um, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he, he's getting pressure. He yeah, can't they discuss, didn't want him but... doing interviews. But but the bottom line is, he, you know, he's moving out into an alternative media as well, and that's that's it's really important that yeah, that yeah. develop because mainstream media is not covering stories like the next one you guys came across. Well, the alternative media is really is this monster that's coming out of the death. Uh, uh, created by um, the the death of the Fairness Doctrine and the Telecommunications Act of 1996. The Fairness Doctrine, uh, pretty much the FCC said every community needs to have a voice and it needs to be balanced and it needs to be represented. Well, the NAB uh, personally, uh, you know, their, their organization comes along and says we don't want these voices on the air anymore. But, you know, they did the Hegelian thing where they said, we're, but we're going to take care of it where it's regulated and we'll make sure, you know, the cream of the crop of these voices uh, gets on the air and, and they're still represented. Well, you know, about five years later, uh, after uh, they pretty much destroyed the Fairness Doctrine, uh, those voices were gone and they're gone today. And now the Telecommunications Act of 96, we're seeing that big time, especially in music. Uh, the Telecommunications Act of 96, uh, Years ago, you could own a certain amount of radio stations in, in a major market, I think it was three, and then you could own a smattering of smaller, minor markets, I think it was maybe 12. They uh, deregulated the whole thing. And so Cumulus and Clear Channel bought up all, especially Clear Channel, bought up all of the radio stations across the country. And just to give you an example, the effect that that had uh, locally was uh, in Minot, uh, North Dakota, a train overturned and uh, it had all these toxic chemicals on it and it just spilled out into the community for days and there's nobody at the station it's just automated and mm -hmm. also what that does to our culture locally is we we used to have before the telecommunications act of 96 we had regional voices from our communities you had an austin style of music you had a new orleans style nolan style of music you had an L.A. style of music, and the, these regional voices went out to a you know, larger voice, which used to be music television or you know VH1 or so on. But you know the Grammys were full of talent that was regionally being created by these communities. And now, since it's so homogenized, we don't even really realize it. You turn on your radio, your classic radio, and you're like, oh, great, you know, 38 special for the 1200th time. That's mm -hmm. awesome. I can't wait to hear that again. Mm -hmm. I'm being sarcastic. Uh, there, there are these voices out there that were musicians, and musicians get a lot more listeners than politicians. So I think the Telecommunications Act of 96 was basically uh, uh, almost a form of communism in the way that it just put a stranglehold on the regional, local, community voices of America and American music and, and creative people. Mm -hmm. And now here we are in this homogenized world where the people representing us musically are completely outward. So you're seeing the same thing in uh, music that you see in news and in other it, television broadcasting, that nope. sort of things. That massive, and microcosms massive and they're all connected together into mm -hmm. this giant macro. And of course you see that also happening at retail. I mean, it's hardly any segment of society that you don't see this massive consolidation in, under the control of just a few corporations you know uh, it, it's great to see in austin that there's a thriving music scene and there's a thriving independent restaurant scene when i came mm -hmm. here there's a lot of micro entrepreneurs that are that are here that's very unusual though yeah it is uh, unusual yeah. and, and people see here in other parts of the country we, we are uh, we're pretty much spoiled here in austin there are other uh, areas in the country like monterey california there are Athens, other, Georgia. Athens, Georgia. There are areas in the country where there's a big, you know, uh, public radio presence, and there's a local public radio presence, and there's also, uh, uh, they appreciate and respect uh, real musicians. 
And uh, there are a lot of great musicians out there that are, no one has any idea uh, who they are because they're not on the radio, they're not on MTV or on the TV, they're not at the Grammys, but they're out there and, and they're incredibly talented and, they, and the, the, you know, the history of American music can, continues. Well, tell us a little bit about your, you want to go to your report or you want to tell us a little bit about what you saw with this, this other news event besides the consolidation story that you guys were covering? Oh, it, it, was, it, it was just a, kind of a bizarre, ironic event. Uh, as we left NAB and we attempted to get uh, these media people who were just aimlessly walking around in their own little reality, like you know they're incredibly important, and they, they have no, they just had they just they had, had nothing to say. They had nothing to they say. Had nothing to say. They had nothing to say about media. Here they are. They're from media and they won't talk to us. I mean, about media. We can go out about on the street and we can we can pull people in. I mean, it, literally, we were asking. We must have asked like 30 people, and they were all just too good for us, you know, except for the woman that talked off camera. They were on vacation in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. So they. So, so what did you see in the street? Well, yeah. so as we're leaving that, attempt, yeah, we did get to talk to one guy, but as we're leaving that, and you'll see him in the piece, uh, we come around the corner, and uh, there's this guy, and he's holding an American flag, you remember? And I said, oh, that's a nice flag, and then... You're like, I bet We're, that guy has an opinion. Yeah, I bet he has an opinion. He, and he, he's, he walks ahead of us, and all of a sudden we're in this big protest uh, right there in the middle of Las Vegas in front of the convention center. At the main entrance, too. Which is totally entrance. ironic. On all four corners of the, of the intersection there. So the news is going on right under their nose. Right in front of them. Right, right in front of the... And the, it was yeah. right when the convention was shutting down, so the people were drizzling out of the convention center, getting in the cabs right next to these people protesting this, this uh, injustice being done to them through the cab companies. And, um, you know, and I, 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 looking back, I wish we got more B-roll of those people leaving because they, they're just hollow. So you guys covered this. You want to uh, intro the piece or just go in straight into it? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, you know, this, uh, this piece that we put together uh, was quickly put together, and we really enjoyed putting it together. But it's a message about the uh, media that we're going to present more. We're going to go more in depth in, in the future uh, and really expose. But it's, uh, these are the fundamentals of the problem here, basically, in this package. All right, let's take a look at that. John Bound for the InfoWars Nightly News. Behind me is the Las Vegas Convention Center, where a five-headed hydra has rested itself for the remainder of the week. Now, there are a lot of good people in there with a lot of great ideas, a lot of great technology, but they have no idea that they serve a dark lord, a cartel known as the five controlling corporations of the media. They include Time Warner, they include Viacom, Disney, Bertelsmann, and News Corp. In 1983, there were 50. Today, there are five. Was anyone watching this report alive in 1983? Does the current state of media seem vastly different to you? We once had competition. We had regionalism. We had success based on talent, writing, and public outcry. As a corporatocracy gained ground, it required its singular voice to be heard. But in order to shove their elitist plastic propaganda in our faces, Things had to change for the average American. And while we slept, it did. In the mid-1980s, the National Association of Broadcasters launched a campaign to repeal the Fairness Doctrine. The Fairness Doctrine required the holders of broadcast licenses to both present controversial issues of public importance and to do so in a manner that was, in the Commission's view, honest, equitable, and balanced. With the NAB's insistence, the FCC decided to eliminate the doctrine in 1987. Civic discussions among the people of a free and democratic society fizzled out and died. Anybody want to talk about alternative media? Alternative media! Anybody? Or are you all slaves to five corporations? I would, I would assume that alternative media is trying to get the truth versus, you know, what the big companies are doing. Um, I, I believe that's probably, you know, the biggest thing about it is, you know, the other side of the story um, or the truth or whatever. Because um, a lot of the time they'll just cut it out. Like you're going to do with video, you're going to cut certain things out, whatever. Um, but 
they do it on a scale, you know, the big companies um, where they can actually manipulate it. Then Clinton ushered in a complete monopoly by signing the Telecommunications Act of 1996. The act basically allowed the regulated ownership of regional media to be bought up by the massive clear channel and cumulus radio chains playing automated music from the early 90s and earlier while future musicians literally must sell their souls to their Illuminati masters to achieve success. As we left the NAB conference, we ran into the ironic event of a taxi protest. We are forced to work 72 hours every week. It's like we make, we don't make a living wage. We, are, uh, we make under a minimum wage and it's unfair. The media is boycotting us. We have been on strike for five weeks. Very little media coverage. And the reason why is because these same companies gave half a million dollar contributions to Governor Sandoval. Local news, I tried to call them and they told me they're too busy trying to find a weather channel. Yesterday was a bit cloudy and rainy. The success of alternative media dwarfs the numbers of MSNBC and it is rising. Will the alternative media be heralded as a renaissance of sorts? Or will it be swallowed up by the beast in the machine, the five-headed hydra of the media cartel? John Bound, InfoWars Nightly News. Wow, that was interesting. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, the, you know, that, that protest, uh, we, we spoke with a guy afterwards, and, you know, we were noticing that there was a, just one ethnicity there. And, uh, and a guy approached us who was with the protest and he said he was a big fan of the jo alex jones show yeah, yeah he knew who i was and i'm never on <laughs> yeah, yeah so he was a yeah. big fan uh it's growing um so he comes and tells us that they're mainly ethiopian and that they thought the ethiopians would be you know uh very docile and submissive compliant yeah yeah, but they, here they were for, for five weeks protesting against, you know, 72-hour work weeks, uh, no bathroom breaks, and what they were saying was below minimum wage. And uh, he also made the point that the Asian community was still driving the cabs. They, they you know, they, they weren't compliant. So they were, they they were, were I'm sorry, they were compliant. Culturally, they were, they were immigrants, but they were mm -hmm. used to that, that kind of treatment, right. that sweatshop kind of... Yeah. Workmanship. Yeah. Right. You just shove them in, get them to work, chain their kids up to a pole, I guess, you know. And yeah. Oh, send yeah. Them off. They've been under the heel of uh, tyranny for so long. That's one of the reasons why the globalists picked China to move all of our industry to, because they knew they could exploit them like that. And they, they would put up with it somewhat. But the Ethiopians were having a hard time with it. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, weren't, they weren't putting up with it. The no, guy said no. they, they wouldn't put up with the S word. <laughs> he well, said they, they weren't going to put up with that. So good for them. Yeah, they took to the streets and they were telling people as loud as they could exactly but what was going. There on. was nobody covering this, but, but there was nobody there to listen. But yeah, mm -hmm. them and yeah, us. one one of the guys in that piece, uh, he he says, yeah, I called the local news and uh, they had they had to cover the weather. They told him. Mm -hmm. Well, see, that's just it. You know, most of the news channels, local news channels, they're going to be covering the packages that are delivered to them, right? Oh, it's yeah. It's going to be the stuff that comes down from the corporate news media. Yeah, that's what just... happens. I mean, John and I both have news yeah, room that's, experience that's in other newsrooms. Yeah. And there was s segments devoted to the feed. You would spend, you know, a, a certain time during the day, you would get a feed from the network. And they say, here's the packages that you're going to run. And they send them to everybody, all the affiliates on, on the tape. They would, you put in your tape. You capture the feed as it comes down, and you've got two to three segments of your news product mm -hmm. ready to go, already made. No mm -hmm. local opinion. You know, no, no, I mean, if we had an opinion on, say, uh, Second Amendment here in Austin, uh, it, it wouldn't be rep it's, it won't be represented anymore on the local. Well, news. it's a very effective control strategy if you stop and think about it. It's not just what they tell people, but when you have the same stories being covered everywhere. From the same perspective, the same angle, telling same you the same milk thing toast, about it. Milk toast stories, too. Yes, and exactly. Yeah. It makes you think as a, as a Everybody viewer hears that, that and it's like, oh, right. yeah, I'm hearing the same right. thing from everybody. Yeah. But you guys, you must be conspiracy theorists. Right. right. Because yeah. you're actually going out and covering the raw material, right? You're actually doing the just reporting. And it's people. something that's completely different than you're hearing anywhere else. You know, that's mm -hmm. just like, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, the, it's the voice of the people that's being subverted through this, this practice of the news product. 
there's a, um, a message that needs to be put out, and it's not what the people are talking about. Mm -hmm. It's what, what uh, you know, the corporate agendas that need to get pushed out. How do, how do you uh, grow your, your uh, market base, you know? You have to uh, convince them of certain lefts, rights, right or wrongs, and the way to do that is to feed them the right stories to drive them in that direction. It reminds me of what people talk about with uh, movies, theatrical movies, how truth is stranger than fiction. You know, you go out and you take a true story. If you're really close and accurate, it's much more interesting than some kind of a fictional narrative that's cooked up out of Hollywood, mm -hmm. you know? And if you go out and you cover what's really happening in the world, and you do it honestly, and you do it from the perspective of what people want to know about, it's a lot more interesting than this dumbed down, homogenized narrative that comes from the corporate newsrooms and then filters down through the hierarchy to the local news stations. Well, it's a lot more exciting to live your life as somebody with your, your own mind, your own uh, free will and creativity than to be some kind of sheep that uh, will just take anything and think that safety in numbers is what's going to make your life meaningful when in fact uh, you're going to be dead real soon. We all are. and. Uh, did you live your life to the fullest with creativity, with what you believed in, to being true to yourself? Or did you just give in to what they wanted you to be? Well, I, I think content is going to win out. You know, I mean, Alex's his show, his, his whole, you know, the radio show, the news and everything, it's sticky content. If you can get somebody there, they see it. They see something that's different, they investigate it, they find out that, yeah, there's actually links that show the purchases of the 1.6 billion bullets They actually link to it. We actually footnote our stuff because it's so hard for people to believe the truth after they've been fed this dumbed down, homogenized stuff. We have to footnote it, so we, we do. That's funny, there was, a, there was a guy we met in Vegas uh, after the, the night was over. You know, we, we saddled up to the bar, had a couple of drinks, met some people, and one guy had knew about Infowars, but all he knew about was the cover story from from other sources. So he and I were engaging in some conversations about what our message was, and uh, he well, he was surprised. He said, uh, "You know, I I had no idea that anybody from Infowars would would sound like this, or, or you know, the stories were backed up with factual documents." Because he'd been presented was, with a straw man. Because he'd been told, yeah. Was. He'd been told right. by, by outside sources, oh, don't listen to that. It's conspiracy theory crap. Mm -hmm. And I would tell him, like, yeah, there's actual documents. There's purchase orders for the bullets mm -hmm. from the, uh, on the government's own websites. Mm -hmm. All of our stuff is backed up factually. Absolutely. And we're, we're saying things that... Or we wouldn't be here. Or we wouldn't we, be here. Right, you know, we'd be the National Enquirer. We'd be getting sued by, you know, Carol Burnett or whatever. Oh, you absolutely. Know? Well, thanks, guys. That was really interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very important. We're trying to stay at top of our game to try to, like I said, have multiple studios so we can do more reports and uh, do a better professional job of it. And uh, it's real important work out there. And, and it's uh, great that you guys cover the story that other people won't cover. Uh, that's, a, that's an important thing. Well, you know, it's very important to not have just a homogenized fictional narrative in many cases but to get a different perspective on the news. And we do our best to try to give you the news as accurately as possible and try to cover the things that we think you're interested in, things that are going to affect your freedom, your prosperity, your health. And so if you are watching this on YouTube, help us with a subscription to Prison Planet TV. You can buy one of these and you can uh, pass it out to 10 different people can be watching this at the same time. The other thing that we do is we put out a magazine each month and that's a great way to reach people as well. One of the things about print magazines, you know, they're dying left and right, but we think it's because of content. And I think we've got some really compelling content in the InfoWars magazine that comes out each month. You can also pick up that in various quantities. You can become a micro distributor. So uh, go to InfoWars.com and support us. We depend on your contribution and on your purchases to fund our operations. That's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.
Hi, Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources. With over 30 years of experience in the precious metals business, I can tell you without a doubt, we are facing the most dangerous and volatile times, not just in the United States, but worldwide. Peace of mind is gold and silver. Now is the time to invest in gold. When it comes to bullion coins, our prices are competitive and the closest to melt. If it's numismatics you're looking for, we have some of the best deals out there. Visit MidasResources.com today or go to Infowars.com and click on the link to see our daily specials. Here's an example of one of our long-term specials we've been offering for more than a year. Two silver dollars from the turn of the last century, plus two powerful films, The Obama Deception and The American Dream. We also add in the book Dishonest Money, all for $72 and free shipping. The most trusted name in precious metals is Midas Resources. Call 1-800-686-2237 or go to Infowars.com. I'm Ted Anderson with Midas resources. We are now only entering the edge of a global financial superstorm, the likes of which the planet has never seen. Here in the United States, the private Federal Reserve is giving more than $85 billion of taxpayer money a month to themselves and other offshore foreign banks. And the worst part is we have to pay the bank's interest on the money we give them. There is now a race between the global central bank mafia cartels to see who can devalue their country's currencies the fastest. We are already seeing big increases in inflation at the grocery store and the gas line. This will eventually lead to hyperinflation. More than a dozen top globalists like George Soros have been buying record amounts of gold while at the same time bad-mouthing it to the public. Don't just listen to what they say. Watch what they do. For more than 6,000 years of recorded human history, gold has been the ultimate hedge against uncertain times and inflation. Before investing in metals, it is important to do your own research and find a reputable company. Midas Resources has the highest Better Business Bureau rating of an A+. Unfortunately, very few precious metal companies can boast that. Midas Resources has assembled one of the most educated, researched, and professional teams of brokers in the industry. The evidence is overwhelming. In uncertain times, gold and silver is safe harbor. Now is the time to invest in gold. Call 800-686-2237 and Midas Resources will mail you 10 reasons to own gold absolutely free. No shipping. It's absolutely free. And finally, Ted Anderson wants to challenge you to find any deal that comes close to his two silver dollars at cost with free shipping, with two free films and a book for $72. That's more than $160 value for $72 shipping included. Click the link at Infowars.com to go to the MidasResources.com specials page. Brought to you by MidasResources.com and Ted Anderson the trusted name in precious metals.